Hey there, John here, and um, I was teaching an herbal class today, and it's a bit snowy up here where I am, and I was wandering out in these woods, and here and there, on the sides of the trees, um, I came across a lichen called usnea, and they're very different types of usnea, but this is what it looks like, okay, and there are actually a lot of lichens on trees that look like this and a lot of people just call all of them old man's beard or something like that or um but pretty much how you can know it's usnea now i have a camera in one hand and so it's kind of challenging let's see if i can sit this down here okay all right that's better so i'm going to take some of this and there we go and pull it apart and if I pull it apart and I see a white stretchy band in the middle of it, kind of like, I just think like a rubber band or something, I know it's usnea. Others will break apart. I don't know what the focusing here can see. Let's see if I can get a bigger one, okay, where I can, pulling it apart and I'm seeing this white like band a wire in there it's just like if you're stripping a wire you know and you peel away the plastic and see the copper wire but it's like pe breaking this apart and seeing the stretchy white band in it then i know it's usnea so i got this nice big clump here of it and so what am i going to do with this or what's usnea um, helpful for um, well first of all we're going to use the whole lichen okay it's antibacterial antifungal it's an immune stimulant it's uh, active against uh, tuberculosis, uh, uh, the pneumonia uh, um, um, bacteria, the uh, pneumonococcus, the staph, staphylococcus aureus, strep, um, and others. And uh, generally just active against the gram-positive bacteria, bacteria that's out there. Um, and also, you know, helpful against E. coli and salmonella as well. And um, let's see here. So, um, also, um, how would you use this? We can use this as a uh, tincture, as a tea. Um, we can make a nasal spray. You can even, for vaginal infections, make a douche uh, from it. Um, so, we're going to show you in a bit making a tincture from it in which we're going to uh, put it in a mortar and pestle or grind it up a bit, break it up a bit before we pour the alcohol on it because it's tough stuff. So to get a better tincture, which we want it to turn a nice orange, we're gonna do that. Um, so, you know, this grows in the treetops and it's, um, if you can imagine the trees like uh, bronchioles, like, of a, like um, in the lungs, but like upside down, you know? and uh, the, the branches all the way to the thinnest branches. And this grows at the top, and this is kind of like the alveoli, in a way, of the lungs, um, of the trees, and um, which is interesting because it even looks like that um, if you get a real close-up look of lungs. And, uh, and um, it's very effective and helpful for really um, heavy lung issues uh, like uh, pneumonia. Uh, bronchitis, um, upper respiratory infections. Um, like I said, also like vaginal infections and fungal infections and all too, and even skin infections. Um, uh, but like, for example, uh, this lichen, if you soak it in garlic juice or a strong garlic decoction, it was a traditional way of treating like large gaping wounds in the body. And you can see it would be like spider webs or something. It would really help like um, you can imagine just stuffing this on a gaping wound, like out in the, you know, battlefield, or if you get, you know, cut, uh, get a big injury or something, because uh, you, you would not only um, help the healing and bringing the wound together, but soaking it in something like garlic juice will give it just that added antibacterial type of strength. Um, so, so yeah, so we're going to uh, make some tincture in a bit, and uh, and once again. Um, when you're on a hike or you're out in the woods and you're looking for uh, usnea, don't forget to take it off first and before you gather and stretch it apart and look for that band. Now, um, 
how to harvest is like you know you don't need too much to make a jar of tincture so i get in a little like it's so wet when these forests around here uh that that it just grows on the sides of the tree but sometimes you might find a downed tree um, in a windstorm for example or branches that fall or or something like that and you and you can find it then that's a great way of sustainably and easily harvesting it so we'll uh make a tincture with usnia so also out here uh what we're looking at today is uh in the northwest um west side of the Cascades is Oregon grape. This is a Mahonia nervosa and um, this has alternate branching though uh, the leaflets look like they're opposite and uh, it's for heavier liver conditions as a liver stimulant also immune system stimulant good first aid plant uh, use that as a tincture uh, as a tea you can use it for the same reasons you could even use it tea, uh, eye wash if you have pink eye or something like that. Lots of uses to get to know. Um, so what we're doing here is we're going to uh, cut it here and leave the leaves here to compost and uh, cut it right at the base. We're going to take these branches back. We're going to make some tincture. We're going to make some tea as well. And um, I'll show you how we're going to do that. Um, these plants, like you see many Oregon grape plants around here, uh, it reproduces by uh, by its berries that look like grapes, of course, but also uh, by runners um, that send shoots of itself around and uh, pop up. So a lot of these could be just the very same plant. So to sustainably harvest this, because it is a forest plant that we don't want to pick too much of and we don't need a lot of it, is that we're just going to uh, pick one here, pick one there, wander around the forest and get a, uh, a small handful of, of twigs and that's all we really need to make a tincture that'll last us a long time without um, making any damage in the ecosystem around here which we want to be careful of because this is getting on the watch list uh, amongst endangered plants because uh, the um, herbal industry is catching wind of this plant and starting to to uh, to gather it up in uh, decimate areas um, also this is a red cedar tree I'm gonna northwest forest here and the red cedar tree I'm gonna take some of these fronds now we're gonna take these fronds and a couple of those twigs right now and go make some tea uh, which would be helpful immune system uh, this time of year especially around here uh, when we want to um, keep our immune systems healthy because we want uh, because you know cold and stuff going around so um, this is not a bad thing to make every once in a while uh, clip some of those fronds off even though those fronds we would uh, if we were making a tincture, we'd want to gather it uh, in August when they're when they're new tips. But hey, they still have energy in them, good for tea, um, and uh, and it also has an affinity for the uh, respiratory system as well. So immune system, respiratory system, it's antifungal, antibacterial, and uh, as well. And the Oregon grape is uh, also antibacterial, and um, like I said, a helpful liver ally and good for the immune system. So we're gonna cut and take a couple of those pieces as well as some of those uh, cedar fronds and take it back and make tea right now. And we're also going to make a tincture out of some of those um, Oregon grape pieces.